Thanks for tuning in to this broadcast. PVR yesterday uh, created quite a bit of a flutter because they had an analyst call, post which uh, I think some details were put out by us in our story as well on our website. It spoke about how they will not release movies that are released on the OTT platforms. Um, they have spoken about how they will shift the seating arrangement so that capacity will come off a little bit as well. But the truth remains that thus far, or for now, the theatres are not opening up. Malls are not opening up. The stocks have corrected quite a bit already. The question that we want to pose to Karan Torani of Elada is uh, whether, one, the business models have changed completely, irreversibly, or does he see some, uh, does he have a differentiated view there? And could there be some more downsides, even if the stocks have fallen, or whatever they would have, an, another 60, 70% already, what stops them from falling more? I think that's that's where I'll be the devil's advocate. But let's get him in on the conversation. Karan, so good having you. Thanks so much for taking the time out. Um, what struck the most to you, Karan, out of the con call that was held yesterday uh, by PBR for the long one day? I don't know if you got a chance to re read some of the stuff. If not, we put out the notes as well. But what what is what has struck most to you in the conversations that you would have had with the companies? I think the most important conversation would have been, you know, uh, in terms of what is going to be the future outlook of films which are going directly on OTT. And uh, since they would not be released on cinema, I think that's a logical thing which is to be done. So there's no surprise me on that front. But uh, I am expecting a lot of more small, medium budget movies, you know, going to OTT directly uh, because the economics uh, do not support a long haul or probably a long wait. And a lot of these films, mind you, are by these small, you know, small time production houses, which probably don't have a holding capacity. And uh, I think in these uncertain times, given the liquidity crunch, uh, many other films which are small, medium budget in nature, uh, you know, will definitely go, uh, you know, the OTT way. And uh, also surprisingly, if you see, you know, the multiplexes have been talking about bargaining power. They've been talking, they've been issuing, you know, uh, press releases by the multiplex association that, you know, uh, we will bar the films which are basically going directly on digital. We'll bar the producers. We'll make sure the future slate of the movies don't, of these producers who are going directly on digital do not get released in cinemas. Uh, nothing of that sort was uh, spoken about. So the multiplexes have got have kind of mellowed down in terms of their tone. And uh, my sense is they will not go very hard on the producers who are going directly on digital. All they can just say is that you know not releasing these digital films on cinemas. Uh, which is quite logical. I mean, uh, if if an Amazon, Netflix, or a global OTT giant is paying you that much amount of money, uh, I'm sure they would also have a protocol of not releasing the films on cinema. So nothing new on that front. Hmm. Actually, I have a follow-up. I mean, if you track this space too closely, I don't, but just as a viewer, I'm thinking, Karan, or as a producer, I'm thinking that even when the lockdown ends and the theatres open up, as a producer of a movie, I would ask myself, do I release it in the theaters if I have the capacity to do so, but wherein the viewers might not be going because of the fears around being in crowded places and theaters. And instead, even when the lockdown ends, I rather release my movie on an OTT platform because now these OTT platforms are widespread. So all these small budget urban centric movies might actually not make it to the theaters because now there is a war. If I mean, if I'm releasing on an OTT, they will not take it. But it might be in my interest not to release it in a theater, and it might be in my interest to release it on an OTT platform any which ways. Correct. You know, so as you rightly pointed out, there will be a lot of fear factor if cinemas open. So if you're assuming a scenario that if cinemas probably open by second or third week of July, uh, uh, I mean, cinemas will start opening in a very small phase manner by probably second or third week of June in the green zones. But apparently, the problem of these cinemas opening green zones is that where is the content? So cinemas might open up, but there's no content on the offering. That's one of the problems the exhibitors have. And uh, plus, the second problem is one. First problem is content. The second problem is the audience coming into the cinemas. And typically, if you know Maharashtra, Delhi contribute almost 40% of the box office collections for Hindi. They are large circuits. And uh, these two states are uh, massively hit in terms of number of cases. So I think uh, there could be a further delay in terms of these two states basically opening up, uh, you know, in terms of cinemas. It could probably even go on until August. Uh, now, if we are assuming that, you know, in August, cinemas open on a pan-India basis, uh, there will have to be some kind of small, medium budget movies which could be released in the month of August, uh, you know, to just test the market and uh, basically see what kind of occupancy we are building, you know, how are the people coming in, what's the kind of footfall like, and are social distancing norms being followed. I think the larger budget films, uh, you know, in the likes of 83, Surya Vanshi, Radhe, 
they will only come in i think during diwali during october november or probably during december so that's how the slate you know you know looks like as of now and obviously i mean small medium budget movies will continue to go on digital because they will not wait uh, longer because of liquidity and the second big factor here is that once the cinemas open up once the occupancy may not go to normal levels obviously because social distancing but once we see some kind of spike or some kind of green shoot in terms of occupancy uh these small but small medium budget movies will also you know uh, find it very difficult to get a time slot in terms of programming because you'll see a large slate of the larger state of films releasing on a week on week basis on a on a very con- consecutive week basis for coming at least 6 to 7 weeks given the state of films which we have right now so because of which you know they are also shying away from cinemas and they are not wanting to take that risk of clashing with the larger films and that's also one of the reasons why they are releasing directly on digital if you look at the comparative study in terms of south i think uh, south market predominantly is very different as compared to hindi and uh, they operate very differently so if in terms of regional film in south almost 80% of the collections comes from these top uh, of the of the four states in the south which are placed so i think south should kick start earlier than that of hindi because uh, in terms of number of cases in terms of you know the the red zone areas i think south is very lesser so i think the south market would kick start first it will give some kind of hint some kind of uh, you know signal in terms of how people are functioning whether football is coming whether people are coming to cinemas and i think hindi will basically learn a lesson from that and basically follow suit from there hmm. okay now wh- how do you analyze these stocks karan now they have fallen quite a bit already one balance sheet is better than the other as well but the other has a larger footprint uh, but there are these very unreal times that we are living in right now is there a possibility for further downsides so what if the stocks have corrected from the peak how does the peak matter any which ways so if you look at i mean we released a report in the first week of april you know analyzing this the three scenarios which could basically work uh, the first scenario was that you know basically cinemas would open uh, probably second third week of may and you know come back to normal occupancy in the month of june july but the second scenario was if cinemas open in the second week of july and come back to normal occupancy probably by august september uh the third scenario was that if cinemas open in the month of july third second third week and they don't come back to normal occupancy until next year april until there is until the number of cases go down completely or probably go to zero something of that sort of probably there's a vaccine occur around that time now uh, in terms of the third scenario which is the worst case scenario uh we were getting a target price of 200 rupees uh you know on inox and currently the stock price about stands at about 170 rupees so the stocks definitely have gone down by 70% uh, i think you know even after factoring the cash burn even after factoring the fixed cost i uh, think i think we are getting a target price of about 200 rupees and uh, in terms of downside from current levels of 170 definitely the downside is very much limited and capped i think the only major risk here is uh, you know the rental part because i think uh, earlier when uh, the multiplexes came out in open in the month of april they indicated to the investors that the force major clause will apply for a period of 3 months and uh, that rent of 3 months will basically be foregone now if you see in terms of rent it is almost 45% of your overall fixed cost and uh, any kind of change in terms of rent whether increase or decrease has a significant negative impact on the ebitda part and uh, there is there is again come back these times where there is uncertainty in terms of uh, how the force majeure will apply uh, not all mall developers are currently foregoing this uh, rental clause for the three months which is your uh, march april uh, april may the the cinemas are shut for three months of time so i think the problem over here is the rental part also going ahead once cinemas open i was expecting into my estimates that you know probably they might move to a rev share or they might move to a fixed rental model wherein you have 40% lower rentals i think conversations on that also have kind of moved on the back burner and there's no clarity in terms of where the rental part is moving so i think that is the only uncertain part which is why the stocks are you know uh, further uh, colliding and there is uncertainty revolving around that i think until we get clarity on the rental part uh, i think the stocks will remain at these uh, valuations hmm karan so okay so therefore i, I just want to make it simpler for our viewers um, what do you do you believe there could be more downsides to these stories because of all the things i mean forget the uh, one day's market mood or one swallow does not a summer make any which ways what is the three month or a six month view would you reckon that there could be more downsides from these levels so i think even if you take the rent in a worst case scenario even if you take probably i'm i'm sure the mall developers the sense will prevail and they will not charge the fixed rent what they were charging in pre covid times there could be some kind of negotiations here and there 
Even if you take the numbers on a worst case scenario, I think uh, given where the stock prices are, they are at the bottom right now. But again, in terms of upside movement, it only depends on how things progress, uh, how the cases move up, you know, when the government allows, when the government gives a notification for the cinemas to open, what's the consumer's behavior, uh, probably if there's a second wave or something of that sort, two, three months down the line, you have a, you have a case in TVR, Inox, hypothetically, cinemas again shut down. In that kind of situation, the stocks might collide further. Uh, but currently, I think the stocks have bottomed out uh, given the current scheme of things and given whatever is happening in terms of current situation. Final question on this conversation, um, Karan. What is the relatively a uh, better stock to look at? I mean, Inox because of the better balance sheet, if I'm not wrong, or PBR because of the size that it has compared to Inox. Actually, even there, there's a bit of a change, right? Isn't it? Yeah, so I think Inox is definitely better to look upon uh, here uh, because if you look at uh, one is obviously the balance sheet, they are net debt free. So I think uh, the ability to, you know, uh, sustain the cash flows, the working capital management and the cash flow burn will not hit them that much as compared to PVR. PVR again, thankfully, raised a QIP in the month of December. So they are also quite, they've also quite sufficed with their funding requirements. Uh, but Inox, if you look at clearly in terms of valuations, uh, the average discount of versus PVR was in terms of EVA beta uh, was in the range of about 20, 25 odd percent. Uh, this was about three years back. And you know, six, seven years back, this discount was almost 50 percent. So they were converging in terms of discount versus PVR and had fallen down to about 20, 25 percent until pre COVID times. And now again, that discounting factor has come to about 45 to 50 times, you know, versus PVR. So I think uh, Inox is more of an attractive bet here in terms of balance sheet and also, secondly, in terms of valuations versus PVR. Okay, Karan, we'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for taking the time and speaking to us at Bloomberg Quint. And viewers, thank you so much for tuning into this broadcast. How many places can you be at once? 